um, the way we think about knowledge um, in terms of uh, development discourse um, and perhaps a, a more sort of relevant example is around evaluative thinking in terms of what have we learned about development and how can we use this learning to inform development practice. Um, and I think that the, it seems to me that there is this um, gap between what we've learned about development and what we're able to apply in terms of how it, how it needs to go. Uh, we're constantly talking about um, the importance of learning from people who uh, perceive to be beneficiaries of development. But in, in, in the practice, their thinking about development doesn't seem to help us um, in terms of understanding what we need to do differently. So this whole notion of downward accountability um, seems to be largely theoretical. Uh, we're, we're still not able to come full circle um, in terms of um, looking to these people and using their knowledge as a foundational um, knowledge for understanding development um, differently. I think perhaps the gap that is that seems to be almost dominant is this constant one between um, the policy side of things and the practice. You know, there's this kind of science policy interface. I think it's um, is is still is still a big gap. It's still a, a um, this huge gulf um, that we still haven't been able to sort of. Um, you know, move from widening, I mean, lessening that gap um, um, and, and benefiting from the hindsight of um, development practice. There is this implicit um, argument sometimes that science in itself is sufficient to address development problems. Um, and in many ways, what I see sometimes is that um, science is, can be at least both a problem and a solution. Um, in ways that um, science can sometimes um, heighten and amplify um, development inequalities, um, iniquities. Um, so it's how do we um, not just sort of see science as um, the panacea, but uh, move to other um, interpretations and um, aspects of development, you know, in terms of social knowledge, practice, culture, um, as equally important in shaping our understanding of development practices. So I think that, that we need to find ways of getting cleverer, uh, not just in looking for the scientific fix or the technological fix, but in understanding some of the complex interaction between society and nature. Um, and in understanding how people um, are able to um, adapt to different dynamics, um, you know, and different processes, and, and how they come out of those processes um, and, and are, are more resilient. For me, the whole issue of agriculture. Um, and and it, 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 in a way, I'm, I'm surprised still by this fact that, um, you know, after talking a lot about agricultural intensification, issues around production, and sometimes even the failure of that, the failure of agricultural policies and systems, how we've come back full circle to that very notion of agricultural intensification as probably way out. So I think in terms of um, concerns that development um, practitioners should have over the next 50 years is how to find solutions within the agricultural sector um, that will actually benefit um, um, people that are sort of resource dependent and dependent on this sector for their, you know, their livelihoods and um, goods and services. So I think that that is going to be a challenge and, and I think that we can get better at this if we adopt an integrative thinking. So the, 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 the benefit of doing this is that we're not just focusing on agriculture per se, 
but looking at um, the intersection between agriculture and water, agriculture and energy, you know, and how we break this knowledge um, silos by integrating the three sectors and, and see how society can benefit from all of these sectors um, in a way that would um, address uh, most of their um, economic, social and um, economic um, problems.